Your head is there to dream your dreams. Your feet are there to follow through. Your heart is like a boomerang, boomerang. What you send out comes back to. Okay. Good afternoon, good evening, Krillionaires and kids. Jeremy here reporting for your Krillionaire update. As always, representing by Boston Coin, in case you can't guess by the subtleness of my little Boston Terrier shirt here and the Boston Terrier watch. Uh, today, we're chatting to the CEO of Hive Power Tech, uh, Gianluca Corbellini. Oh, I've got to get that pronunciation right. I've got to practice that a few more times. Gianluca holds a Master of Science in Mathematical Engineering from Milan, so he's very smart. Focus on mathematical modeling, optimization, and artificial intelligence. He's got extensive experience working with multinational corporations in the energy field and has been an asset, asset manager for photovoltaic plants and a research engineer in the oil and gas industry, all over the power situation. In the University of Applied Science and Arts of Southern Switzerland, he's involved in the most modeling of photovoltaic plants and development of new business models for the optimization of smart grids. He was also a lecturer for the university uh, on the course of design of energy systems regarding the design of microgrids. And when he's not out there saving the world and solving power problems, he likes to snowboard, play tennis, and sometimes watch football. Uh, you're missing out on the World Cup, though, this year, mate. No plans for mathematically organising that? <laughs> yes, that's why we schedule our ICO for June, so we have something else to do, and we... <laughs> We don't cry about our World Cup uh, team that is missing the, the okay. matches. Yeah. Now you, you've been in this arena for a long, long time, mate, with, um, with all the, the background in engineering and gas and electricity and, and that sort of stuff. So what, what got you very passionate about energy? Yeah, so I always, uh, as an engineer, I always liked this uh, energy field because it's... Yeah, it's very important to everyone. It's, it would really change also the life of developing countries. It's, it's really something that uh, we need it. It's, it's not just uh, uh, something that we would like to have. And, and, and it's also a field that is evolving very fast. So in the last 15 years, we've been moving away uh, from an old centralized world with only uh, central power plants like coal, hydro, nuclear and oil and gas and so on. And while now we already have a completely new framework with a lot of energy that is produced locally by distributed renewable energy sources. And if you think about photovoltaics, for example, like I remember when I was a kid, like 25, 30 years ago, it was like a dream, like something in the science fiction. Everybody was saying it could be the future, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. But still, a very. It was all in, on our ca calculator, so it was like uh, <laughs> <you know? laughs> those little tiny solar powered yeah. calculators that didn't do yeah, much. Or, or you know, on, on satellites, but satellites is a very niche application. Mm. But today, today is crazy. In Italy already, we have like uh, between eight and nine percent of the energy produced by photovoltaics, and wow. Italy is, you know, is already quite quite a big country, and in the world is booming, booming everywhere in China, U.S., South America, Africa will be the next one. Mm. It's mm. really impressive how much the technology has evolved. The prices are going down, and and it's the same for wind. Also, wind is been seeing a crazy, uh, cra crazy increasing of installation power, and it's really a success story for the research and and the industry itself. In a few years, it has been able to to to, to be very competitive with other energy sources, and so that, that's how we're seeing this paradigm shift. In the energy mm. is, is very very exciting. So in the last years, let's say. Ten years ago, the challenge was uh, how could we make uh, renewables competitive economically, technically, uh, with a good uh, reliability on the long term. Uh, now I think that this is no more the main topic because solar is already in many countries the cheapest source of energy, uh, especially, of course, in the sunnier country, but it's true almost everywhere today. Mm. 
wind is already very competitive. So the, the, the challenge now is how to integrate efficiently the, the energy, the renewable energy in the electrical grid. Because um, energy, electrical energy as, uh, as a main challenge, that is you always have to synchronize production and consumption in real time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, yeah. of course, you can do it with forecast and uh, some sort of uh, real-time control. Mm. But with uh, um, renewable energy, you have a new issue that is they are uh, intermittent and not controllable. So mm. if you have sun, you can produce. If you have wind, you can produce. Otherwise, you, you, you basically you, you can't have an energy. So um, the main solution today that is approached by... Um, both academics and industry is to go on the demand side. So on the demand side management, so you try to synchronize your loads. So basically how you consume energy uh, when it is produced by renewable energy sources. So it's, it's really much more convenient. And this is still necessary because storage battery are still uh, quite expensive. Mm. Everybody is expecting uh, um, a huge drop in prices as well as it happened for renewables in the next five, 10 years. But still, it's, it's quite a suboptimal solution. So the, the smart way uh, to solve it is to, to, to move our energy profile in a way that is compliant with the renewable production. And so it's, this is what we call smart grid in general. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. make the grid smart thanks to new very fast communication that we can have. Uh, we knew forecast algorithm, artificial intelligence, and so on, all these kind of things. We can have a good forecast on energy profiles and adapt our consumption to the renewable uh, production. That's so our is, main uh, yeah. the energy. Is, is that where the artificial intelligence comes in? Because obviously, you know, if everybody's watching the World Cup or if everybody's watching the Royal Wedding or if everybody's watching the same thing at the same time, everybody's TV is going to be on. How, how can you forecast when there's going to be high energy days and, and low energy days? Yeah, yeah, there are many, already many, many algorithms available in the, in the scientific community about uh, energy consumption forecast, also on, on, the, on the production side. Mm. So as university, we already have been running uh, some projects on this topic because it's, it's, it's very important. It's, it's a very big topic. Uh, if you can predict with a big, big accurate, with a good accuracy your energy profile, uh, you will have a big economical benefit uh, because otherwise, if you made a wrong forecast, it will cost you money. So yeah. that's why there are a lot of there is a lot of interest in this. In this topic. Uh, you, you mentioned China and Africa before the, the emerging economies, yeah. and I'm, I'm thinking sort of back to when we were kids and we didn't have. We didn't have our mobile phones plugged into the wall. There was there was no mobile phones. It was just a normal appliance. And cameras didn't consume much power. And a lot of the things in your house didn't consume power. But nowadays, we've all got these electric electronic devices that need charging all the time. And you know, this this is this is just the Western world that that's, that's increased our, our consumption of electricity so much. But wait till we get you know 1.6 billion Chinese who all want a mobile phone, and 1.2 billion Africans who all want a mobile phone. They're coming out of the agricultural age and working in the cities. Their energy consumption is going to be huge. Yeah, in some in some way, uh, we will see big increases. I think uh, on the other way around, we the energy efficiency is going to 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 improve year by year in in many appliances, and so yeah, it's the energy paradigm is changing uh, pretty fast. So we will, I think another shift is that we are moving from uh, fossil energy to the electricity, uh, clean electricity energy also for uh, electric vehicles. So we will not use so much more uh, gasoline and diesel and we're moving to electricity that hopefully will be produced by renewables and also for a heating system so um, uh, for example in switzerland now and also in germany i think every new uh, building is uh, built uh, with, a, um, with a with a big inertia in a thermal inertia so it's, it's very efficient thermically mm. it's very insulated by the, the environment 
So it's, it's convenient. It's happening always that we uh, we install a heat pump. So we don't we don't no more install um, gas or, or oil uh, heating systems. Mm-hmm. So it's full electric. So, but this is a good thing because it's, it makes your clean, your city cleaner. So you you don't have this uh, smoke from pollution from your heating system. Um, you also have a great flexibility because your house is very um, the temperature in your house will, will change very slowly because it's very good insulated. Mm-hmm. So you have a sort of thermal inertia, and so you can play with your heat pump. So it's not necessary that everyone is using it at the same time. So you can coordinate a little bit to be more um, flat on the on the electrical grid. And so this new flexibility also, uh, thanks to electric vehicles, can improve a lot the, 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 the management of the electrical grid. Mm-hmm. So it's something that um, you lets you play with your energy profile. So you can shift a little bit before or later your mm-hmm. consumption. And so you're, you're doing something that in smart grid is, is very important. So this... Uh, Energy shifting is, is is the key of the, the 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 solution of the integration of renewables. So it's it's a good thing that together with a lot of renewable energy, we're also having these new uh, devices with a lot of uh, flexibility. So, mm. but also electric vehicle uh, charging. If you imagine, in, I don't know, in five, ten, fifteen years, uh, most of the people will be driving uh, electric vehicles. And so if you imagine everybody, almost everybody is getting home at about 6, 7 p.m. in the, in the evening. So if they plug in their, their car, everybody will be charging at the same time the car. And that, that's yeah. not good at all for the, for, the, for the electric system because you have a huge peak. Uh, it could be an issue on the, the voltage drop. It could be an issue on the, the safety side. It's, it's a very big problem. And the mm-hmm. energy provider would not maybe... Uh, so happy to provide you so much energy in a short time. And so it, it will charge you uh, big money, but um, you, you, you will have faster charger in the future, so you could uh, easily shift your energy profile. Maybe you don't charge it at seven, you connect it, and there is a smart system behind it, of course, based on smart algorithm that could be artificial intelligence or other things, uh, maybe more simple that just uh, will just move later your charging so uh, on the overall profile we will have a more flat profile not so much so so big and thick and it's it's better for everyone this is also our approach we we want with the high power to provide a mechanism that can uh, incentive the user to um, to modify their energy profile of course it has to be done automatically by uh, Smart controller. We don't want people. No, no one's going to wake up at three o'clock in the morning to charge their car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is how, how we, we we see the future. So mm-hmm. there will there will be a lot of flexibility, but already today is already happening. Mm-hmm. So we want to play with with that to to optimize the the energy management. Yeah, I the the old the old system was the off peak hot water system. So, you know, there's, there's two different energy systems in your house and one's running the lights and the TV and the off-peak hot water only heats up at, you know, three or four o'clock in the morning when nobody's, nobody's using the energy. And it's actually cheaper. So, as you say, if, if people adjust their behaviour, uh, they're going to save money. And um, if you can do it automatically, all yeah. the better. So, yeah, the, very the, good. The, you know, the, the basic idea behind is very old. So, it's, it's what was happening before with... Uh, day and night tariff scheme or in Switzerland mm. where they had a lot of, uh, we have a lot of nu- nuclear power plants, nuclear energy that was basically flat. So there was not taken up and down. So you were forced to, to warm your, um, your water, your hot water uh, during the night. So you had a control in your house mm. even 40 years ago, a ripple control that could turn uh, off your boiler during the day. So you could you warm up your boiler only in the night to use the mm. nuclear energy. So it was a very basic solution for a big problem. 
But we now today we have smart controllers, uh, artificial intelligence, many other things, uh, good forecasting systems, something that was not available 40 years ago. So mm -hmm. we can really take advantages from that. I guess I guess a lot of people aren't really aware of of the nuclear energy unless there's a disaster like Fukushima. Uh, but there, there's still you know um, nu nuclear nuclear plants in the US that have been stockpiling all this nuclear waste for the last 30, 40 years. They were supposed to come up with a solution for safe disposal in 1977, <laughs> and they still haven't. You know, 40 years later, they're still stockpiling all this nuclear waste. Uh, so obviously you guys have come at the right time, but when, when you implement a system and you say, okay, we've got the smart grid and we've got the solar and we've got the wind, how long are these solutions going to last before they need to be replaced, before they wear out? Yeah. Um... Renewables have quite a long uh, lifetime, so uh, have a long experience with solar, and solar could last minimum 25 years. It's suspected also in business plan to last to, uh, to last 30 years, but it could could last even more because uh, in our university here at Zubci, we are very proud that we have the um, uh, oldest installa solar installation connected to the grid in Europe. So it's it's quite a Guinness World Record. It's a Guinness European record, let's say. Yeah. And uh, because of course in US there are older installation, but in Europe it is the oldest one, and it was installed in uh, 1982. It is the same uh, year where, where, where when I was born. So it's, it's we are uh, we are like brothers, twins. And um, but so it's, it's, it's still operating now after. Uh, almost 36 years now, and but with, with good performance. So compared to the original performance, we are still around 80% of the, the efficiency compared to the original performances. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty impressive that still uh, after 36 years, uh, a solar plant is so, is so efficient and uh, you don't need to, to, to you, you need to replace inverters, but, but that's it, all the other cable structure, everything is still there mm. so it's, it's so if, if it drops down below 70 or 60 percent when when do you actually say now it's time to replace this thing <laughs> no actually it's just a sort of uh, museum plant it's uh we, we were, we're not using it to to really make money also because it was super expensive when we installed it so yeah uh, it's just a research research plant so mm. i think that um the shutdown will be when the, the plant is no more uh, safe because mm -hmm. you, you could have an insulation uh, issue. So it could be dangerous for the operators that are doing the maintenance. It is very, very low effort the maintenance, but it could be if you touch um, a solar panel that is not well insulated, it could be pretty, pretty dangerous. Mm -hmm. And so this would be the, the, the shutdown timing, but I think it's just still uh, years, years to see. Okay. Uh, there's, there's obviously a lot of competitors in the renewable energy space at the moment, and I'm, I'm sure you, you've heard of like Power Ledger and obviously Tesla and, and these kind of guys. What, what would you say that you're doing different? What are you focusing on? Yeah, I, I, of course, I'm aware that there are many competitors, and I'm very happy of it because it means that there is a huge market. If I'm doing business alone in my business, I think it means that or oh, I am uh, too early or I'm mm. a business that is too small. Mm. So I'm very happy to have many competitors and uh, my approach is always to talk with them and to understand what we can do together because energy is a huge business. Uh, there will be not only one company working, but even not only 10, not only 20. There will be hundreds of companies successful in the next years. Uh, medium big size it would be a huge uh, a huge environment and um, the main difference from our uh, especially from our energy and blockchain competitors is that um, we already we are already able to provide a coordination algorithm that is a sort of um, optimization layer to uh, to optimize of course the, 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 the management of energy locally because uh, many of the other competitors are just claiming that they use blockchain to exchange energy, so it's sort of blockchain metering. So 
uh, what well, why what we propose a blockchain uh, energy management. So it's something that we, I think a bit more uh, far beyond, and we can provide it um, not because we are smarter than the others, but because we are working on this topic by already six seven years. So we already develop uh, really something uh, very similar in, a, in other projects and. Um, yeah, now we are doing it with blockchain. They can have a very nice uh, additional feature, but about uh, yeah, demand side management, we we are working on it by a long time. So uh, with, with, we... with the blockchain, a lot of people are talking about the Internet of Things. So now I'm imagining, like, is the fridge going to send a signal to the power company saying it needs some energy, and the car is going to send a message to the power company? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've I've also been just been two days ago in a, in a big conference in Berlin. It was a blog show by Contelegraph and there were already a lot of companies as we do to, to provide um, blockchain solution for IoT. And uh, it's a big challenge um, for two reasons, I think, because one, you with uh, internet things, uh, very often you need to, to have a very cheap uh, device do communication and computation, and you also want to, to, to transmit a lot of data. Mm -hmm. So you have two channels now to, to, to use, to maybe develop a very simple hardware to integrate in this uh, in these things, <laughs> where the Internet of Things will work. And the second one is, of course, the biggest challenge I see now in blockchain is the scalability. So, um, because we, you, you want to, to, to move a lot of data, you want to do a lot of uh, small transactions. Mm -hmm. And today, everybody knows that in, in blockchain, uh, at least in Ethereum, in Bitcoin and so on, uh, the, the, uh, the transactions are quite expensive. So you cannot mm -hmm. do a lot of transactions for small things. So I think that the very, um, the most interesting uh, solution now are the ones that are already addressing uh, the scalability issues. Mm -hmm. So to solve this, we are working with the liquidity network. There's another Swiss uh, startup. It is run by Arthur Gervais and Rami Khalil. And uh, they are providing a multi-party state channel solution. And so it's a way to make uh, micro payments and micro transaction with uh, uh, very very low uh, transaction cost it could be also very very fast and so it's it's also very important for us because we want to certify the energy production consumption and it is something that has a small value so in 15 minutes you can consume like I think maximum one 1.5 dollars of value so you will not do a transaction on Ethereum where it you, you will spend more on the transaction than the actual value also, yeah. Ethereum is not able to support all this large number of transactions. So we were, we were working off-chain uh, with this still a safe solution. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but sc scalability is really the, the big issue now in blockchain to develop real things because, yeah, everybody has good ideas, good projects and in mind, but uh, to make it real, you have to face the, the scalability. Mm. I, I remember 20 years ago, when, when the Chinese were, you know, most of them were sort of working on the land and on the farms and they started to, to move into the factories. And previously they didn't have a need to have pay slips. They didn't have a need for cash because there was a lot of barter exchange going on in, in the rural society. And they didn't need to be educated so because they, they weren't working in the factories. They didn't need to learn to read and write. And what started to happen was the, the cost of paper started going up because every time someone moved from the, from the farms into the factories, they needed to have pay slips. They needed to have instruction manuals. They needed to be paid in cash. So there's this huge consumption of, of paper in China. It just went up dramatically. Now I'm starting to imagine because 20 years ago, the Chinese were forbidden from owning cars. And now you're starting to see this, you know, this burgeoning middle class of, of Chinese who want to buy their own cars and maybe they want to buy electric cars and things like that. So I can see the, the, the world energy I don't know. You call it a bubble or a crisis, or what? What would you? What would you call it? Yeah, it's yeah it's something that is changing uh, fast. So you mean that uh, maybe? Yeah, it's 
I, I remember a famous quote from uh, Fidel Castro. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, was, it was fun. It was like uh, 40 years ago and everybody was claiming, uh, oh, your poor countries, uh, nobody has a car and blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And so he was saying, oh, we are, we, are, uh, we are lucky that nobody in, in Cuba or in Africa or in Asia, like in China, a poor part of Asia has no car because if you imagine if everyone has a car like you have in the U.S., that the world would be already completely destroyed. So <laughs> it was a famous quote, but yeah, it's, um, but I think the world is changing and uh, the, the, the research on the, on the efficiency, on the green energy is going very fast and uh, there are mm -hmm. big incentives on it. So I'm pretty optimistic on the future. So it will be much more consumption, but it will be much more, the, the production will be greener. Uh, yeah. But also will be also more efficient. And yeah, I think the 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 real challenge is I think is to 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 fight these climate changes. Mm. Something really happening. Everybody should be really focused on yeah to be more efficient and not waste energy. It's really something that we again I would like to to to, to make another famous quote is from uh, Obama that. Um, it was original. It was not originally from him, it, but it's, it's famous from him. So um, he said that we are the first generation that are fa is facing the the climate change, mm -hmm. but we are the last one that can do something to to solve it. And it's really, I think it's it's pretty it's pretty true. So we have to to do to do something to 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 fight the the, the climate changes. It, it's because not often you'll find a guy who can quote Obama and, and Fidel Castro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the yeah. is super clear. Eh? We, we have a lot of glaciers that are becoming smaller and smaller, and in the mountains, the, 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 the climate is changing faster than in other mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so with the with the smart grid, can you explain that a little bit further? Because, I mean, there's there's a couple of different ways of looking at how we're going to structure power in the future. Like everybody can have their own, own solar panel on their house and they can be connected to the grid and they can feed back to the grid. Or we can have these massive solar panels out in the middle of the desert somewhere that are feeding everybody else. Um, and obviously we're going to need to have batteries either at your end or at the consumer's end. So what, what basic structure? Don't, don't, don't go into the whole complicated engineering part of it. But basically, what will it look like in the next few years for the consumer? Yeah, I think it will be, um, of course, it's very country dependent because, in, for example, in, uh, it's, we're, we're, we're living in two completely different countries. Switzerland is very crowded, so we have no space for a uh, ground-mounted solar plant. Uh, also, the, the, um, the land is super expensive, so if you want to, to, to buy or to, to, to rent a large part of land, it's a crazy price. Well, in uh, in Australia, yeah, you, have, you have a lot of land. It is, I think. No, we got uh, boatloads. Yeah, <laughs> almost almost for free, and so you can install uh, big solar plants. It is more efficient, of course. Like everything, you can have a sort of economy of scale. So, uh, in your case, you could have, I think, much more energy produced uh, by large power plants, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, Almost really, also everybody could have a solar plant of the rooftop. But the, um, I think in Switzerland, but in Europe in general, uh, in most of the European countries, like also Netherlands, Belgium, that are very uh, population dense, the population is very dense, you, you can only go on the rooftop. But, but even in the rooftop, we have, uh, considering those industrial rooftop, we have a lot of space. So we could really produce most of our energy locally, mm -hmm. uh, then the challenge will be also on the storage system because if we go further and further with the solar and wind, we need also to have a cheap solution to, to store the energy. Yeah. Um, historically, it was it was done by um, hydro hydropower plant with pumping system, mm -hmm. uh, but right now in Europe we all already uh, implemented almost all the, the pumping systems that were reasonable for uh, seasonal or for daily storage. So we have not so much more room to, to do this. And 
Yeah, but my, uh, I'm also very uh, optimistic on the research on the battery storage uh, technology. There are many technologies that could be promising for the future, uh, both use cases, because battery storage has two use cases. One is a static, your home, mm-hmm. which could have, you, you want to need to have just something that is cheap to operate. And the other one is when you, when you move, so your car, you need also something that is very uh, energy dense, so it's uh, not very, has a, a limited weight and, you yes. know, it's faster, fast to charge and fast to discharge. So it's something maybe similar to supercapacitor, but it's supercapacitor is still uh, expensive and too big. So. Okay. But I, think I, that I can imagine be, in, in Australia, as, as you say, like around 95% of Australia is, is largely uninhabited. There's 5% of the population just on the outside of, not, sorry, 95% of the population on the outside edge of Australia and only 5% in the middle. So but look, looking at, at some of the countries, like obviously Africa has, has got a huge population, but they're fairly well spread. Uh, yeah. And China has got a massive population, but they're pretty condensed because they've got the the mountains up there as well. So, I mean, what what sort of solutions can you have for, for wind farms and, and things like this in the mountains? Yeah, wind uh, wind scale is a bit it's, yeah it's, it's a bit different. It's not so modular as solar. So mm. solar plant basically is the same, a big one or a small one. You just have more modules and different kind of inverter, but it's it's not different. Well, in wind, uh, it's yeah, it's much better to have big wind turbines, more efficient. Mm. And of course you have much more wind, the taller you go. And so it's something, it's easier to level up in some kind of country as Australia or something that you don't have so much dense population or offshore, offshore. So of course it's a good uh, use case. Um, yeah, but I think it's, also, wind is very going very well in the next years. Is oh, I'm thinking we put the wind farms on the top of the Swiss Alps, mate, so you can keep an eye on them while you're skiing. Yeah, there are projects about that. There are projects that still the, 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 the power is limited, and it's, yeah, Swiss Alps are also very touristic and it's very nice. Yeah, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe not. About it, yeah. Mm. But I'm very happy with the um, energy strategy in Switzerland. Um, that there has been a um, public v- votation, you know, in Switzerland there is this very democratic way to take a decision for the whole country and everybody can vote on this uh, small topics, let me say, so that the population choose to, to go in the renewable direction and so to uh, have no more additional nuclear power plant and so when the power the nuclear power plant will uh, and their lifetime in some years, uh, it would be without nuclear. So mm. uh, some of them are already pretty old. So I think uh, in maybe 15, 20 years, there will be only one power plant of the four that we have. And some years later, we will be nuclear free. It's also something, uh, I think, uh, long term view because Everybody is not considering uh, the cost of uh, nuclear uh, waste for the future. Yeah, if you put it in your business plan, it will make you completely different energy prices. So the, the Americans are spending $2.4 billion a year on the storage of the waste that's already been sitting there for 40 years. And yeah, it's got yeah, a yeah. half-life of 24,000 years. So they have to keep spending two, $3 billion every year just to cover yeah. up this mess. So, and the, the energy's already gone. They've already used the energy. It's just covering up the rubbish. So it's, it's ridiculous. And pe- people will say that you know, solar is obviously more expensive in the shorter term because it's a lot more complicated than, than burning coal or something like that. But as you say, if you can get 36 years service out of, out of one, one unit. Um, yeah, but you know, I also the new, new, nuclear power plants are like uh, big banks. When, mm-hmm. when they make money, they make money for themselves and when they have big issues, oh, no, I'm going to fail. And so they socialize the, 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 the liabilities. So it's, yeah, <laughs> it's not fair. It's, mm-hmm. I don't want to be the polemic, but it's, you know, something that is not going yeah. to 
work in the long term. So after we invest millions of dollars with you and, and buy up your token, yeah. then you guys are going to go and put solar panels on every, every roof in Europe? Is that the plan? No, we're not going to store. We will just provide um, a system that will make uh, renewable, distributed renewable, uh, more uh, um, convenient, economical. So people will be more enthusiastic about, oh, we install my solar plant, for a rooftop and then I can say I can use my energy and then I can sell it to my neighbors mm-hmm. and my neighbors are uh, pay me a very convenient tariff for both yeah. because the issue today is that when you buy the energy from the grid you pay it a lot like mm-hmm. 20 25 uh, 30 cents and when you sell it back you get very uh, small money it's like five cents five, uh, yeah but when, when you, with new laws, you, can, you are allowed to make these energy communities and inside these energy communities, you can trade energy with your neighbors. Uh, of course, there will be a small fee in between, like uh, three, four, five cents to compensate for the local infrastructure, so for the grid mm-hmm. operator. But everybody can really have like, at least double, double tariff to, to sell the solar energy. So we want to boost it in, in a more efficient way. We, we don't want to install solar plants. We don't want to be like uh, uh, EPC uh, engineering uh, construction company or uh, industrial manufacturer company. We want just to provide a platform that allows this uh, to happen. And then it will be by other operators to implement other things that they are better than us to do. So I think we have to work just together with others. We don't want to yeah. do everything so that, i guess the opportunity for the consumer is they can have cheaper energy because i can be buying electricity from my neighbor rather than from the, yeah. the commercial entity um, so as, as an investor then where, where's the big opportunity is is that little money that we're making in between or how does that work yeah how do you guys I, make money yeah this is uh our business model is inside this energy community we made another very small fee um for every energy transaction. So just to, to operate and maintain our company, we don't want to build a kind of very huge company. We want to be something that could just uh, maintain this platform and make new features and integrate it with other systems, but we don't want to make everything. We don't want to be installers of renewables. We don't want to be uh, installer of batteries or uh, develop smart meters. We want together to we want to work together with smart meter manufacturer as we are trying to do to have a new generation solution that is already blockchain ready. So uh, there will be hopefully in a few years uh, blockchain ready smart meters, and that basically will will be able to tokenize the energy to work as a wallet or a light node on the Ethereum network. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is from a company perspective. So for the people that want to participate to the cloud sale, um, the idea is that uh, whenever this system is going to be used by uh, communities, the, the, the number of the tokens will be scarce because you, our utility token is just used to create and manage these communities. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, there will be a, a reduction, hopefully, of uh, the availability of these tokens in the market. And so for a, for a, for a person that want, want to buy this token because it, they, they want to support the project and they, they believe we are able to, to deliver the solution, uh, they, they can get uh, an increasing value in time if, if, the, if the, the project is successful, of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, my, my vision for the next two years is to develop several pilots in starting from Europe and maybe also out of Europe and also establishing important partnership. I think partnership in, in the energy business is uh, fundamental. You have to tackle the problem from different angles, so you have to work with the, the best partners to, to, mm-hmm. to deliver the final solution. And we'll we'll get you to come down to Australia as well, because as you said, there's there's plenty of cheap land. There's there's plenty of scope for putting in panels. Not not yeah. so much skiing here, but you know. Australia needs needs a solution for the energy 
environment. Yeah, you you're paying a lot of your energy, and it's you don't have uh, so much robots to greet. So it's something mm. that will be, I think, improved a lot in the next five ten years. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I guess too, Jen. Look, one of the things with like nuclear power, obviously, if there's a, a natural disaster, if there's an earthquake or or a hurricane or something like that, that can knock those things out and obviously poison the environment. But because they've got so many moving parts, that can be a big issue as well. Whereas um, you know, wind, you've got one, one moving part, solar, you've basically got no moving parts. So yeah. if, if disaster struck, if there, if there was an earthquake, how soon could you guys be back on and supplying electricity? So another very good point of distributed renewables is, as you're saying, that um, you can have uh, uh, much more reliability. So there is also this concept of uh, energy sales that means uh, uh, it's already happening in Germany as a concept, but it will, be, will happen everywhere. There will be a sort of uh, region for energy, uh, and the region itself will be almost uh, independent, almost autarkic. So if something happens very bad, they could be disconnected from the rest of the grid and be autonomous and still keep uh, going, everything as before. Well, it's also more, very different from from before because before there was like in Italy twenty big power plants and everything was relying on them. Mm. And if you have an issue on the high voltage, as it happened uh, because of a storm in in Switzerland, when the tree well was for falling down to a high voltage connection, or the well, the whole Italy was. Um, was on a blackout, so it was, yeah, you mm. were strictly, strictly so interconnected and dependent, but in the future you could also face the issue. that are not very common in Europe, but in other countries, it's easy. So in developing countries, it's very common to have a blackout. And it's, mm. it's one of the worst things that can happen there because uh, you cannot implant a real industry if you always have blackouts, it's not going to work. So. So also the, the improvements on the energy provision in developing countries, I think, will boost a lot the, the, the industrialization. Mm. For example, in Africa, they, they talk a lot about uh, Chinese that want to, to, to exploit new industrial uh, areas in Africa, but before they have to provide uh, reliable electricity. So, yeah. yeah. Very good. But I know, obviously, from a consumer point of view, if the electricity goes out, that's a bad thing. It's not just the, the meat going off in the freezer. Sometimes there's people on life support in hospitals. There's people who need oxygen yeah. in their own homes. Now, there, there can be life and death situations. I know in Australia, sometimes when the, it gets up to 40 degrees and then the power goes out because everyone's using the power and yes, people start to die because the air conditioners won't work and it's, it's just too hot. So obviously, if you've got these autonomous things that can you know, operate independently, it's going to be fantastic. And from the other side, from the investor side, obviously, when the blackout happens, the company's not making any money. So yes. the faster you guys can get up and running, the faster you, you can become profitable again. So fantastic. Like, I'm, I, it's clear you know so much, and I appreciate you you simplifying it down for, for our people who may not be engineers with masters of science or, or even mathematical backgrounds. Some of us are just people who actually support the idea of, of renewable energy and, and also want to, want to make a dollar out of it because why not? So uh, for, for, to find out more information, where, where do we go? How can we find out more about the ICR? Yeah, if you have a lot of time, you can read our white paper. It's, it's pretty long. It's like 20, 30 pages, but we have, uh, I think, uh, if you're more uh, like, um, you would like to like to, to read blog posts, we have a blog on our website as well. Uh, so you can read some more uh, vertical information about what we are doing, uh, about our development, our team, and so on. Uh, of course, we are very active on the socials, so Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook, mainly. Um, if you want to make a question, I think the best way is to do to go on our Telegram channel. So you can mm -hmm. access it from our website. It's very common practice now in the blockchain environment. And I think that's it. So, so on, on Twitter and Telegram, do we just search for Hive Power? Or? Yeah, you also have the link from our uh, website. 
you can access our social from uh, www.hivepower.tech. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you can find all the, the, the media contacts there. Okay, so if we go to hivepower.tech first, then we can find all of the other social media yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So you right. is, is there a simplified white paper yeah, for, for people like me who don't want to read 20 pages of a technical manual? Yeah, no, I, just, no, I just want the quick start guide. <laughs> we have a one pager, so it's just yep. one page and it uh, summarizes everything that is going to happen in a simple way. But it's, it's a very common, um, very common request. So it's everybody mm -hmm. wants to have something uh, synthetic and, and then you can, of course, go in details in the white paper. Fantastic, because I'm, I'm, al I'm already thinking in my head the white paper should just have about 10 words on it. So <laughs> it's like hivepower.tech. Uh, save money, save the planet, uh, sustainable, almost bulletproof. That's about it, right? That, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Is there anything, anything that I've missed? Yeah, if you, if you also have some uh, strong mathematical background, we also put a sort of uh, um, coordination mechanism uh, in the, but with mathematical detail, details because it's nothing. Yeah, talking, it seems to be easy, but when you have to implement it, you need to, to go deep in the mathematics. So we have uh, also some explanation in the white paper. Of course, we recall, we recall to, uh, to several um, academic uh, scientific paper, mm -hmm. uh, but also from the white paper, you can understand a little bit how much the, the, the problem is difficult to be fair and, and uh, transparent. Mm. I, I guess with it, with any investments, the question is always in the back of your head, like how long is this business going to be around? If there's someone popping up and selling T-shirts or sneakers or something like that, they might not be there in two years. But as you, as you say, with your infrastructure, we could still be making money on this thing 30, 40 years down the track after investing. Is that right? Yeah, I think at least for, uh, yeah, we will be facing smart grid problems by, for, for, 20, 30 years for sure, it's, it's mm. the future. So even if some new technology is happening, yeah, Smart Grid is there to, to, to optimize the, the, the coordination of consumption and, produ and, and production. So it's, it's a big topic in the future. And renewables, I think it's, yeah, nobody can say that uh, renewables are not the future. They mm. would be considered crazy. Beautiful. Well, thank you very much, John Luke, for give, giving us your time. And um, everybody jump onto hivepower.tech to download the, the one-page white paper or the 20, 30 pages if, you, if you're more into that. And obviously, these guys, as I said, very active on social media and Twitters and Telegram, so you want to get in contact. If you do happen to have a Master's of Science and you want to ask some more technical questions than the questions that I, I've asked, please feel free. John Luca, thank you again for your time. It's been fantastic talking to you and look forward to putting some more of your high power tokens into our portfolio. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. It was really nice to talk with you and guys, enjoy our platform. We, we are there to deliver our project pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you. Look inside and you will find all your wealth inside of you. Wealth all starts inside your mind. What you send out comes back to you. What you send out comes back to you. Your heart is like a boomerang.